I'm Meg Ruffman. Masonry. It's like icing a cake. Today, we'll build a set of steps with bricks and mortar. If you've got spots around your home like this, this is what we call an accident waiting to happen. Okay, check this out. The bricks are loose. <laughs> I rest my case. And um, really, I mean, this is a fine piece of masonry, except that it's very unstable. I mean, the design is good. There's integrity in the design. It's, it's very linear. But what we want to do is make this into a permanent installation, because it's that good. And then that way, it'll be safer, too. So I've got my safety glasses, and I've got my dust mask. And I'll tell you why. This is the mortar, and I'm about to mix it up. It's um, very alkaline, and you can actually get an alkaline burn out of stuff like this. If you get it in your eyes or up your nose, which you will do, because it flies around all over the place when you're mixing it up. So I'm preparing. There we go. So um, now I'm going to make a, oops. Now you've got to get, you've got to get these things on right, or they don't, don't, don't do any good at all. There we go. You pinch that wire right up at the top. Okay, so I'm going to dig a well. This is like a bit like making a cake. So you dig a well in the middle of the mortar. There we go. And then you add some water. Oh, I should mention, this is a really, this is just a piece of scrap plywood that I'm mixing on. And it's really quite cool because you don't have to have any special mixing trays or anything. Just a, a scrap piece of plywood. I haven't done a lot of work with mortar. This is one of those how hard can it be things. You know what can be really hard is keeping your dust mask on. All right. So just a little bit of water at first. And then hoe like mad. Oh, geez. You see, I was just a little too enthusiastic. OK, there we go. Kind of the consistency of pudding, and then you add a bit more water. Or a lot, if you have absolutely no control, like me. Oh, geez. OK, so you're trying to keep it inside the walls of the moat here. Control. Okay, that's starting to get good. Okay, and I'm going to add a bit more water. <laughs> My safety equipment is failing me here. <laughs> okay, now see, that was a much more restrained pour. So I'll just keep mixing this up till I have the whole um, the whole, I'm going to call this my palette, so I have a nice big hunk of mortar all ready to go on this palette. Okay, this is where it ought to be. Okay, now the way you check to see if your um, mortar is the right consistency is you kind of give it an old whack. And if it kind of feels like, like the back of your leg, you got it about right. Okay, so it's a bit, a bit floppy, a bit mushy, and yet firm. All right, so what I'm going to do now is, uh, is uh, well, I'm not going to wipe my hand off. Why would I? I'm, oh, <laughs> I really like mortar. I, I just want to play in it, really, and I'm having to force myself back to the, the topic here. So here we have, um, I've been taking these bricks off and dusting them as I go because they're, um, they're covered with uh, dirt, and that means that they won't stick properly to the mortar. So. I'll just get rid of these last few. You got to get that mason's uh, heft with the brick. You got to be able to kind of like throw them around authoritatively. Okay, so you can see uh, there's a trace on the um, on the old, old patio of where the bricks were. So I'll just use that as the basis for my mortar bed, which I'm about to to start spreading. Now there are two issues I have to deal with. I want to make sure that the steps are level and I want to make sure that they drain properly so that water doesn't collect in them and then just um, get into the joints of the mortar and eventually break down the mortar. So I put my level down 
to see what I'm working with. And it looks pretty good so far, but I can see there's a dip in the middle here. So I think what I'll do is put my mortar bed down and then try setting a couple of bricks, dry setting them, and we'll level again. I've got my big trowel and my smaller trowel. While I'm laying the mortar bed, I need a lot of uh, the mortar, so I'm going to use the big one. Ooh, this is good. The mortar bed, can you can afford to go outside of the boundaries a little bit because we can trim it up in, in a moment. Now I can start trimming away a little bit of the excess and leveling it out. I'm just going to eyeball level it at first. So I'm going to put the level on it and it's pretty good now. It's a bit high at this end. So as I set my bricks, I'll want to take that into account, but I'm ready to go. All right, so what I want to do just before I start setting bricks is take my smoother, and I'll just dip it, get it a little bit wet, and then I'm going to make this mortar bed just so creamy and smooth. This is satisfying. I had not lived until I did this. Oops. Very nice. Now just one other thing I want to check is to see how the level is coming front to back. I checked side to side. So let me just put my little torpedo level on it. And what I've got is the exact reverse of what I want. I've got it sloping toward this retaining wall, which will just trap moisture in the retaining wall. So I need to build up the back of my mortar bed by about two quarter of an inch it looks like so let me just do that before I get all into the other bricklaying bit. This all right so I'm ready to set my first brick your first brick goes on bare naked right like that that's all there is to it now we get to the more interesting part which is buttering the brick so the next brick, I get to butter on the side. Whoops, you see, that's where it gets tricky. I get to butter it on the side and on, actually, just the side, because it's going to butt up against the next one. You see, this is where the guys that are really good at this are really good at this, because they don't drop mortar all over the place. They just make one quick like this, like they make those funny little noises with their lips when they're learning. Okay. Okay. There. Okay, now the next brick, I'm using that crisscross pattern, so my next brick is going to go in like this. So I have to butter this end. See what I said before, What, what if they're a little bit dusty? The mortar doesn't want to stick, and I, I was right about that, because the mortar doesn't want to stick. So you just have to keep working with it a little bit. There we go. Okay, and one more just like that, except now I have to butter this edge and this edge. Okay, now I'm just going to check this with my level to make sure I'm on track. I've got this end is high, and that end is a bit low. So I want to, remember I wanted the water to run off towards the front. So I just have to keep an eye on it. That's better. And this way, 
Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? The old Mason's trick. Oh, bang on, check it out. Much better. Okay. So you're getting the idea. This is really, really fun. And you know, you can tell by, by the way my jeans are gonna look like they're looking now, about 10 minutes into the job, that by the end of this job, I am going to look like a mortar vixen. And uh, that is the kind of thing that makes me very happy, and I think you too. Okay, so this time I'm buttering just one edge. As you're working, you should just keep an eye on your mortar because it can dry out if you're a slow worker like I am. Every once in a while, you just want to take your hand and just dribble a bit of water on the mortar so that it doesn't start to um, set up, especially around the edges. That's still looking good. Okay, I'm just going to pop the level on that again. Okay, we're high here, and that's looking pretty darn good, except it needs to be a bit hotter. So I'll use my tamper. Much better. Not as good. And I've got this brick set a little high. All right, so I'm gonna keep working here and um, and just see how dirty I can get, and uh, I'll, I'll let you know when to come back. Okay, it's minutes later. This is going really well. I've got the level back on this thing again to see how I'm doing. I'm a bit high at this end, so I'm gonna once again use the uh, butt of my trowel to smack those bricks down a bit. Okay, that's about as good as it's going to get. Bubble didn't really move, but I happen to know that what I'm going to do next is lay another mortar bed over the top of this one for our second level of bricks. So, not to worry, we'll fix it next. You can also see I've cleaned up all around the edges here, and the way you do that is you just use that um, smoother, and you just go click like this, just go click, and then um, take away the excess. So. It's looking very, very fine indeed, and I'm about to lay a new mortar bed. So I want to get it a little bit higher at this end. And this one's a lot thinner. The first one went on pretty thick. It was um, about half inch to three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to be much more um, modest this time. I should just put the level on the front of this to make sure I'm not bowing out, and which I am. So let me just use this to get more of a straight edge on the bricks. That's better. Okay, so if you're any good at all at icing cakes, you will excel at this. It's truly fun. Now the trick is, around these edges where the mortar's kind of falling off, We'll build up a bit of a ridge, and then when we put the bricks on, press press that excess out. I think, yeah, see, here at this end, I'm just going to plug that now, so I don't have to come along later and do what is called repointing, which is basically just filling in mortar where there's some missing. Often on chimneys, you get missing uh, mortar breaks out of the chimney joints, and you have to repoint the chimney. Okay, so that's mounded up. That'll work well. I'll do that around the front also. Okay, so I don't want to wreck my side and front mounds up too much, so I'm going to worry about these spaces as I come to them, putting the bricks in. Also, I've discovered something, and that is that the these bricks are dusty, and if I wet them, before I put the, well, before I butter the edges, the mortar sticks really well. So let's see. Those two bricks at the back were lengthwise, so I'm going to have to turn this one crosswise, so I can just set this brick. So I have to check with the edge. There we 
there we go so the next one's going in beside it so I just need to butter it one edge I think I could just there we go You know, here's a tip. Don't do this on the edge of your pail because half my water, uh, half my mortar has now dropped into my water pail. It's going to be a sludge nightmare on the bottom. Oops. Okay, there we go. And I have to keep checking it against the side to make sure that it's um, going plumb with the edge that I've already made and being a little anal with the level but see that's better actually that's a little too high that's better just want a little bit of a tilt on it and I dip my brick and I just need one edge That's good. And see, there's the ooze factor happening there. The excess is all squeezing out, but it's a lot better than having it um, caved in or not enough mortar in that joint. Okay, now the clever mason will notice that she has not come flush with this edge. See, there's a, like a half inch there that I'm a bit off. So, and that's just because the, of the dimensions of the brick, and it's a different pattern this time. Um, bricks are always a little bit I don't know how to explain this. You have to give a little bit more space when you lay them crosswise because the dimensions don't quite work out. So I just need to move everything over a tiny bit so that I come out flush here. Like that. So I'll split the difference through the rest of the bricks. Good, and then I'll just add a little bit of mortar there so that they hold their spacing. Then with my next um, end brick, I'll make sure that I get it right. Oops, well, vertical's asking a bit much. That's much better. Okay, bang on, and we need this one a bit lower to get our quarter bubble. Unbelievable. No, believable. But it is my first mortared stairs, and I'm feeling so perky about this. Okay, so now we get to the art part. is called a pointing tool and with this I can carve out that gorgeous little thing that makes bricks look so good masonry look so good see watch this <laughs> this is going to be my new job that has got to feel good when you can Finish your day with a smart little pointing tool.
I, um, I'm going to come back in about an hour after the mortar has had a chance to set up a bit and take um, a towel, a wet towel, and just scrub down the surface of the, the bricks because I, I want them to be pink and pretty, not, not this gray color. So I can remove the excess mortar with a, with a very, very old towel. All right, so I'll just finish the pointing here. Okay, now I'm doing this on the sides for decorative purposes. But I'm not going to do the tops, the surfaces of the stairs, because I want the water to run off them unimpeded. So I actually see one other little spot that I have to fill up here so that water doesn't collect in the joints and then erode the mortar. So this will take a day or two to set up so that it's hard. You can certainly walk on it in the meantime, but it's nice to just let it sit. Here's a tip. If you couldn't get into mortar work without getting it all up your arms, all over your legs, and all under your fingernails, wash your hands and body and everywhere you got it in vinegar because um, the acidity of vinegar cuts the alkalinity of the mortar and then your skin won't burn. After a tough day of home repair, even the daintiest girl can develop a pretty tangy aroma in her sneakers. <laughs> Let's not blame the sneakers. The feet had something to do with it. Well, here's the remedy. Simply soak those little sausages in tea, lukewarm tea, for 20 minutes twice a day. You see, the tannin in tea acts as a drying agent and stops those pesky odors before they even get a chance to start. Isn't that helpful? Well, that's it for now. Until next time on A Repair to Remember, I'm Mag Ruffman. Oh. <laughs>